Let me know when you're ready. Thanks, Daddy. All right, I, I have your blessing. If making it easy to be an illegal alien isn't enough, government is another way to say better than you. In fact, you know how fast a five cent hunker comes down. No sane country would do that. Cruz and Cassick are in it for a participation trophy. Oh, what you represent to them is freedom. Hosted by the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash. Just remember, all hate mail comes to me. The Southside Mutt Show. Cheerleader. I don't have the boots for it. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome to the Southside Mutt Show, hosted by the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash. And we are digging up the dirt on news. The Southside Mutt Show is every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember to join in a live chat. Go to shrmedia.com. Just click on the chat room button and join the conversation. And screw you, Crash. I heard you in the background yipping away trying to screw me up. I, I, I heard it. I think it's the only reason you got it right. I think it's the only reason you got it right. Yeah. Oh, God, that's a liberal answer if I ever heard one. I tried to screw you up. All right. All right. Hold on. I got to run. I got to run head first into a solid object. <laughs> so. Maybe that brain cell is back where they're supposed to be. So did you do your homework? <sighs> Honestly, I don't see the point. It's done. It's over with. Just let it go. Forget about it. What difference does it make? What difference? There we go. What difference does it make? Okay. First of all, doing that type of homework while in my place of employment may be not the smartest thing for me to do. <laughs> I didn't tell you to do it at work. Uh, but given the fact that my boss is conservative and everything else, I, I got some leeway on it. Uh, was he? Uh, did he watch it or anything? Oh, I don't know if he watched it or not. With all the stuff that's been going on, I mean, I filled you on know, some of the crap going on at work. I mean, honestly, I'm not even. I'm trying to take stuff away from him, not give him more <laughs> aggravations. I mean, I, dude, I'm literally about ready to bring my blood pressure pump into work to keep an eye on him. I mean, if, the man is stressed, ridiculously stressed. Um, all right, so what do you what do you want? Which one do you want to talk about first? Uh, you just want to start from um, step one and work our way through it. I mean, it's it doesn't make a damn bit of difference to me. I I went to uh, Reaver dot one and I watched both of them there. After I had that, I did some follow up stuff poking around on uh, like YouTube and other stations, just trying to see what other angles I could get. Um, so I, it really doesn't matter to me. You it's pretty it much all the same. It. Uh, it, it's the video is the video. For those that don't know what we're talking about, I'm um, yeah. speaking about the Project Verteus. I, I think I say the name right. And um, they, uh, they, they went undercover into uh, DNC uh, groups, oh, wow. campaigns, and, and just... The uh, how would you explain it, Crash? Because I'm, I'm uh... okay. Well, essentially, what they did was they sent undercover reporters in to these different DNC organizations um, at high levels. Uh, okay, like you know the national type level, um, all the way on, and then you know follow back, follow the story up and down from you know region, you know uh, local, regional, national. Uh, to connect all the players. Uh, according to them, they they essentially started this uh, about a year ago, and they've actually been able to prove uh, things going back even pre-Trump. So this isn't <laughs> this isn't a 
Trump versus Hillary thing. This is exposing the corruption of the Democratic National Party because they've got stuff. They've got information that goes back to the primaries. I mean, goes back to when we had a dozen Republicans running, when we had you know, what half a dozen to a dozen Democrats all running. Everybody was going, you know, for the nomination last year. I mean, you're talking a year and a half ago. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, this is the this is the group that blew the lid off of uh, Planned Parenthood. That whole Planned Parenthood scandal. These are yeah. the guys that did that. And let me back. Okay, I want to back so. something up real quick. I don't need to cut you off because uh, a comment in um, no, 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 there was a comment in the comment section. Well, well, they've gotten in uh, legal trouble before, so I'm not going to believe them. No, they had charges brought up against them, and all the charges were dropped because they didn't do anything illegal. Okay, let's let, let let's go ahead and clarify something really quick. <clears throat> if you're only going to look at if – if you're not going to think back into history or if you're too goddamn young, and in all honesty, I think that's part of the problem. I mean, crap. My youngest kid, we went into the corner store to pick some stuff up the other day, and they had a newspaper, a local newspaper that just started publishing. It's only for my area. What's that? So I picked it up to see what it was all about. You know what she asked me? <laughs> Your niece turns around and, you know, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just reading the paper. I wanted to see what it's all about. She's like, what's a newspaper? <laughs> okay, I mean, everybody, everybody's so used to getting all their information now off of mainstream media, that's it, and social media, that's it. Now, if you're only going to go by that and you're not going to think back to what investigative journalism was, yeah, all is. investigative journalists, okay, all of the good ones, all the ones that broke stories, they got threatened. They had lawsuits filed against them. They were taken, they were taken prisoner of war in foreign countries. They were t- charged as enemies of the state for reporting in foreign nations about atrocities against uh, humanity. Okay, that's what these people did. This this BS now, where they sit around a round table on the 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 puke, wherever the hell that stupid ass show is, with <laughs> that knucklehead that needs to leave the country. Well, there's a multiple. I, I want to leave the country. Uh, bye bye. Yeah, I mean, if, oh, if, if, oh, that's, oh. if that's where you're going, if that's where you're going to get your news sources. I feel sorry for you. I, I really, truly feel sorry for you. I, I, I know I'm going to change the subject. Means, this is going to be a brief. It also means you're probably not listening to us. But <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'm going to change the subject just for a brief second because I want to uh, – I'm going to make you throw up here. Now, I'm probably going to make more than three quarters of our uh, listening audience three throw up. So all three out of so the four, four of them. So all, all four people. <laughs> well, three out of the four. Um, Madonna has promised if you vote for Hillary, she will give you a blowjob. She looks you in the eye and even swallows. Okay, I had every intention of getting laid tonight. <laughs> uh, it might it might take a while before. I'm serious. That was a statement she made to try to get people to vote for her, for Hillary. That was a political. So wait a minute. And my other thing is, so now we're into no, bribing on. for sexual favors. No, honestly, what I'm trying to figure out is why is it that all the women around Hillary have to perform the sexual favors? Then Hillary doesn't. <laughs> uh, Actually, you know what? You know what? Going with that, you know, we're going with the, the gross out factor and everything else. Um, I have no, I have no proof of any validity of this specific thing. Um, but it was something I came across researching something a while ago. Um, all right, you've heard uh, Operation MK Ultra, right? The whole mind control thing the CIA was doing mm-hmm. you know, 30 years ago, yeah, or whatever. Well, there was a thing that came out, and now this is just accusations, which apparently now, what's up? What's up, man? Um. Why well, he deals with that real quick? Now, I don't mean to uh, uh, put the vulgarity out there. Well, then again, that's not beneath me to talk about that. Um, the fact that this woman actually said that is kind of scary within itself. Um, and like I said, so now there has to be sexual favors offered to get um, 
Democrats to vote for Democrat politicians. And I thought it was illegal to offer any type of services or anything for the return of votes. I thought that was highly illegal. Um... Isn't that also a form of prostitution at the same time? I mean, there's so many ways this is wrong. But, of course, it's the Democrats, so they do anything they want. It's perfectly acceptable. They can break the laws. Nobody cares. Well, I'd, I'd hate to say that because I think a lot of people, a lot of people are caring nowadays. A lot of people. Uh, these videos that are put out has caused such a uproar. It, it, it's it, it's number one. I can't believe this is going on in the country that I love, let alone. Let alone that it's going on all together. Uh, these videos that came out, that was taken a long way away from that. It, it's pretty scary and disheartening that this is going on. Oh, crap. It, it's... You always hear about illegal activity that's going on. That's one thing to hear about it. It's another to actually witness it. And that's what we are. We're witnessing a political party doing whatever it wants justifying why it's doing it and just it, it it has to be kind of speechless that this is going on and that nobody is calling shenanigans and those that are pointing out the wrongdoing are being lambasted and attacked Um. Now, two of the people that, uh, two of the big shots that were involved in these videos, and again, you can go to Revert dot one, um, check out the videos, check it out for yourself. But when you go there, uh, two of the big honchos, uh, Froval and Cream, I think it is, have both been fired from their position, and I understand some of the other people's um hesitation to believe that they actually been fired, but I do believe because number one, these people so nonchalantly talked about it and it probably pissed off a lot of um, upper echelon that don't want their dealings out in the open. So, yes, I, I can see them being fired. I can see um, some groups being really pissed off that they exposed how they were dealing with these elections, how they were winning. So, it's... I do believe they've been fired. Is the long way around it. Um, I think we need to start looking at some in-depth stuff. Because the activity that is going on 
needs to be addressed. It, it's it's mind numbing that this is acceptable in today's day and age. We got the debate tonight. Um, that's going to be interesting. And I, 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 I'm really positive that Trump's going to do good. Um, through some information, I am pretty positive that Trump is going to actually win this election. I've heard some information that makes me feel very, very good about things. I don't want to put it out there because I can't uh, back up the information. So uh, I'll just leave it right here, right now. But I feel that good about this election. And then kind of uh, off tempo a little bit. Uh, Crash had a jet out of here real quick, and it's kind of caught me off guard. So, hey, speaking of, speaking of, what? I was just saying, it kind of caught me off guard that you had a kick out of here. Um, that I had a what? That you had a kick out of there. Um, you had something pop up, and you had. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that. I just thought it'd be easier. All right. Uh, well, forget what I was going on about. Where are you at? Just it. it I had, <coughs> I had found some information out actually that um, has me pretty confident about this election. And without going into a lot of, <coughs> oh, sorry about that. I wasn't going to go into specifics, but I had come into some information about some internal polling. And the internal polling is more accurate than what we get as citizens. And and once I heard this internal polling, everything made sense to me real quick. And I mean everything. Actions of Hillary and so forth. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you got. Trump is up by 15. And that makes sense of why she's willing to burn the house down. And I mean that by, you know, throwing all these accusations, just going totally nuts with everything and not caring about what the consequences could bring. Because she, at this point, is trying to do anything and everything to change the direction of the campaign. Well, it is screwed up. You gotta be kidding me. What's up, kiddo? <laughs> Turn it down a little bit. And I, I, I can't. I didn't know we needed more. I can't back up check that statement. The, check in the closet. I, I, I'm not able I to. No, honey. I, don't be... I'm going to turn that down. I don't get it. Um, but it's some very good sources it comes by. And as I said, it makes. You back. Yeah, it makes sense by the her, the actions that are going on. Um, I want. I'm only loaning that toilet paper to you, though. I want it back. <laughs> that's the. All right. That's a new one. <laughs> Just yeah, but it made the kid stop at her tracks. Like what? <laughs> that's just fun. Sorry. Right. Anyway. <laughs> It's I can't back up those that statement right now. I have no way to substantiate that. Which one's that? That Trump is up by fifteen right now. Um, oh, okay. But I have it from very good sources that. 
that's what is going on. All right. Well, and that explains uh, real all quick, the actions. Real, real, okay, real quick. Before we go any farther with this conversation, if your source charges by the hour, I'm not sure it's reliable. Just saying. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you got, I, I, I don't know. Um. <laughs> you weren't expecting that one. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, though, it's it, – She's doing more harm than she's going to do. She is doing more harm than good. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of like, at least my opinion, a lot of the actions. Well, we are, are opinion not even show. Just her. So. <laughs> not even just the actions of her, but the actions of the DNC as a whole. <laughs> Animals, uh, mammals. I, they're more. They are the most dangerous just before death because they've got nothing to lose. That's when they pull out all the stops, they don't give a shit, and they're going to do whatever the hell they have to do to try to survive. That's what it seemed, I mean, that's what it seemed like to me for a while that she has been in. Yeah, I mean, and, think and, about it. She has had you know, this whole – I can't even remember act when of desperation. the comment made. But there, was a, there was a comment made a while ago uh, equating the Clintons to the Kennedys, you know, that the Clintons are essentially royalty. And if you look at, you know, their political gambit, I mean, ever since the 80s, they've been involved. So 30 years, they've been in politics, in mainstream politics. That's not counting the behind the scenes stuff before and after. I mean, that's mainstream front and center. This has been their livelihood. And it's all been leading up to you know, she's got it in her head that she, you know, this, you know, she's going to get this. This is her. I mean, she has been cocky and overconfident ever since day one with this. I mean, she has been the epitome of entitled when it comes to the presidency at this point. And I think it's finally hitting that, hey, hey, hey guess what? It doesn't work that way, sweetheart. And this is her last shot, and I think she knows it. Yeah. I mean, she already did. She already did a failed run. I mean, no, they blame um, voter fraud on that know, one. And I'm, that's within uh, John Podesta's uh, uh, leaked emails you know, that it was I'm, I'm sorry, Obama-style the, the voter fraud. Thing, the funny – but see, now here's the thing I get a kick out of is the only party that does voter fraud is – at least the only party there's ever been any evidence of, like true evidence, has been consistently the Democrats. So it's just really I can't help but laugh my ass off when she turns around and attacks Obama about the voter fraud, and that's the reason why she lost because he did <laughs> – so what? He used your playbook better than you could? Because that's essentially what you're saying to me is essentially you're saying you got outmaneuvered on your own playbook. Basically. You know, I, 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 I'm sorry. You know, butt hurt much? <laughs> you know, I, I, I really don't know what else to – I really don't know any other way to put that. Oh, my gosh. Yes, sweetie. <laughs> uh, I guess the toilet paper wasn't enough. Uh, it, it's... It really is... Exactly. Uh, they think it's entitled. It's... They're right. It it's belongs to them. Nobody else should be allowed to have it. Uh, she's worked hard. She's carried the water for the Democrat Party. I mean, she's been promised. We all have heard the stories that she's been promised. You know, they think it's theirs. They it's theirs. It, it just disheartening. Uh, sorry, what's that? It's disheartening. Just it, the politics today. Oh no. It... I, we went over all that yeah, it, I, it, on the day show today. It's it, I'm not trying to like you know uh, blow off our viewers tonight uh, or our listeners tonight, but it's just a it really is. It people are starting to wake up. Yeah. You know, I mean the the, the political. You know they, they keep people aren't buying the, the bullshit answers. Machine. You know this is the political machine and this is this. Well, that's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way that our government, our system of government was designed. Our system of government was designed around pe about people electing representatives that they felt could best speak on their behalf to handle affairs, not electing people that were predetermined. And these people would tell me 
what I want and tell me what I am and am not allowed to do. That's not our system. That's dictatorship. And the irony is we fight against those. I mean, how many times have we gone into armed combat and gotten involved in conflicts, whether it was with military support or humanitarian support, to overthrow dictators? The yeah. irony is we've got it right here. I mean, we've got it right here. You know, it's just it's, – it, it's, it's like these people can't see past their own egos to even like look in a mirror. Well, I don't think you know? that there I mean, is as much support – as they make it out, I, I really don't think there's that much support for the Democrats. It's. I can tell you one thing. Uh, what is it? Uh, Lawrenceville, Alabama? <laughs> is, was it in Alabama? I know they're not supporting them anymore. <laughs> uh, you drain a black water tank. Oh, I thought that was Georgia. A. Oh, it might have been Georgia. I, it was somewhere down south. It was, I, but I remember the township was Lawrenceville. Yeah. that's what caught my attention. Uh, they basically they one hundred percent shit on the town. You know, and then you've got I mean, you got a hazmat come out. It's not like they pumped it into an actual sewer system. No, they pumped it into a rain drain system. They pumped it into storm sewers, not actual sewage sewers. They're different. They're significantly different. I mean, that feeds into storm sewers, I mean, storm drains or storm sewers, depending on what terminology you want to use. Those drain into waterways. So that goes into the waterways where people fish and uh, people go swimming and the animals drink from and maybe people get well water that is supported off of that, and they're dumping raw sewage into it. I mean, the EPA had better be all over their freezing asses because I, that's I, – I, I can't – I couldn't even – I read that, and I, I couldn't even begin to figure out the actual number of federal violations, let alone whatever the state and locals are. That's – I mean, it, up here – you have to be in jail. Hey, hands down. You'd have been you'd have been led away in handcuffs, and you'd be yeah. getting a goddamn bill for the hazmat cleanup because that shit's not cheap. That's some expensive shit. And that's the thing. I, one of the articles I read it talked about that that in several states that would have been um, a criminal offense and could have yeah. wound people up in jail. Yeah. It, it should have. It wasn't. Oh the shit! Is, the valve broke open. Oh god! We no. It was. Well, no. When you initially, when you initially brought it up, okay. When you initially brought it up, and you said that they, you know, they they dumped onto the street. Uh, the first thing that ran into my mind was, okay, well, was it black water or was it gray water? Because there's a difference between the yeah. two. It, there's actually there's three storage tanks on RVs. Okay, or any any system like that. You have three storage tanks. You have got white water, which is your clean water that you use. All right, and then your discharge tanks. You have two. You've got gray water and black water. Now, gray water is anything that comes out of a sink. It's you know the you know it has uh, you know, soaps in it. It was used for washing dishes, washing your hands. Um, uh, it's been hit or miss whether or not uh, the shower water is cons- is considered the same, um, but black water, that's the toilet. That's all that is. I mean, even people that have sewage systems, you know, on their property, they have septic tanks. Most have two different storages. They've got gray and they've got black. Black is the one that has to go to field. Black is the one that has to get pumped. Black is the one that's all nasty. Gray can go to a separate holding tank and go to a separate field. In a lot of places, gray water can be discharged out into your lawn for irrigation. I mean, if you're using soaps that are not harmful, yeah. you know, biodegradable soaps, you can use that to water your lawn. You know? I mean, that's what a lot of people do with their dishwashers because it's such a large load on a small tank you know, to have that pumped out every few months. So, I mean, that's initially what I thought because I don't know if you can do it nowadays, but I do remember you know, decades ago, it was fairly common with RVers that, you know, the, uh, the gray water valve, you would never – okay, let me, let me put it this way. 
you would never open the discharge, the dump valve for gray water when the tank was full because that would just get you way too much unwanted attention. But what you would do is when you're driving cross country or whatever it is, you open the discharge valve and you just leave it open while you're driving. So periodically, small amounts of water come out, come out from underneath the RV. But it doesn't have a rancid smell. It doesn't. Yeah, you know, it's just so. Now this was a blatant. No, I don't feel like going to away. the uh, uh, the you know, <clears throat> discharge, and uh, I'm just going to dump it here. Oh no! This, this was honestly what it sounds like. Is at least what it looked like to me was they dumped it into a storm sewer. Most likely, and I'll, I'll bet this is going to be the defense. Well, it's a sewer. They were just figuring, well, I can just dump it there. It's yeah, a sewer. That's not the way so it I'll works. So I just dump it there, and yeah, I mean, I don't know about down there, but I know up here, and uh, if I remember correctly, Florida as well on storm sewers. It's got placards on all of them with like fish on them or something. It says drains to a waterway. No has bad fuels. idea. No discharges. Okay, it's only meant for water. That's it. Nothing else. They shit on Alabama. Yeah, or Georgia or whatever it was. I mean, that's essentially what they did. They shit on them. Literally. Anyway, okay. Uh. What else were we going to be talking about? Oh, mostly the well, video. We're talking about the, the, uh, so what have we gone over so far? Well, the, obviously the rigging of the DNC. Um, uh, what else what was that? What haven't we touched on? Trying to think how they incited the violence during the Trump rallies, how they were hiring um, mentally ill personnel. Oh, they had that one ch- – I mean they had that one guy. He was bla- – he, he was bragging. You're not even supposed to know who I am. He was using an alias yeah. the whole time. What was he calling himself? Mr. Black, and he's the Something. tactical commander for field, for ground operations. Like, okay, dude, you watched way too many spy movies. Like, <laughs> you'd last about five minutes in boot camp, man. You know? Uh, but, yeah, and they're bragging. About how they incited the riots in Chicago, how they shut down the interstate in Arizona. I mean, you had that hippie-looking chick. She was bragging about it. She was on Hillary Clinton's payroll. (laughs) There's actual links. It's same with, uh, I think it's Cream. He is on Hillary Clinton's payroll. Now, honestly, you want to know, one of the things that popped out in those videos to me, that I think was the most disgusting or the most disturbing one of this. I will tell you, you were right. It definitely had an effect on blood pressure to watch those. It was <clears throat> these, uh, what were they calling themselves? These consultant groups that figured out a way to go around the system and they're describing it. Well, no, uh, you know, this organization can't talk to, you know, the campaign cannot talk to the super PAC. Yeah, and I mean, they're doing this on a massive scale, but we'll just bring it down to two because the principle still applies. So the campaign can't talk to the super PAC. So the campaign hires a Jersey joke. No, I can't be that mean. The campaign hires douchebag consulting to help them out. Now, the super PAC hires jackass consulting to help them out. Well, the two consulting groups can talk to each other. So it creates that double blind. That's what they were referring to it yeah. as. It's a double blind system. They're essentially putting two insulating barriers of these two consulting organizations between the organizations. But the consultants are allowed to talk. They're not bound by all these laws and regulations. So the super PAC says something to their consultants, their consultants talk to the other consultants, and the other consultants talk to the DMC, and then it all comes back around. And they even complain that it's, well, yeah, it's not really that efficient. I mean, it's kind of like the Pony Express. It takes a while to get stuff done. But, hey, it's, you know, it's how we're able to do it. it, it wow. So you're bragging about the fact that you found a way to circumvent the law. That was that the funny. They were just bragging. They were proud of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, honestly, that was probably the most disgusting thing to me was rather than using their energy to figure out a way to do things properly, 
they're using all the energy and using all this, these financial resources to figure out ways to circumvent the system that's in place to protect the electoral process. They're just finding new ways to circumvent it. I mean, what was it that one guy said? We've been doing this for 50 years, years and we'll keep on doing it. Well, I want to know, you know what the – I'll fuck my mother in front of somebody and uh, nothing will happen. Well, technically right. it's not against the law, but why are you talking about fucking your mother, you sick bastard? Yeah, no crap. I'm like, oh my – what does that have to do no. with elections? I'm sorry. The most comical one was the one guy that was saying that, oh, yeah, it's a, there's no way I could get fired. I mean, there's nothing they can do to me. I'm oh, that was the other video. I could, um, I could grab her ass two twice. Times, grab her ass twice, and I wouldn't even get fired. And they started doing, grab her by the pussy, grab her ass twice, grab her by the pussy, grab her ass twice. Yeah. <laughs> Laughing. Okay, so I'm jumping ahead, but dude, I was laughing. My no, ass. no, oh, there, there's a lot of videos that are, have been exposed. Um, and no, these people are not breaking any laws. Um, no, they're not. They're exposing. But, and oh, I heard of the oh, well, these are foreign entities. Well, you know what? Our um, media used to do this for the longest time, but now. They're in bed with the politicians, and it's been proven with uh, WikiLeaks that the media's in bed. Well, what was it? There was, uh, there was a couple of cuts that I found today. Um, I can't remember exactly. They're not that old because it was discussing the uh, – it was the WikiLeaks stuff. But actually one of them I think was from today. It was either today or yesterday where uh, they were asking the guy – I think it was a congressman. They were talking to him about the debate, <laughs> and you know he started giving his answer. And then he brings up the WikiLeaks, and all of a sudden the satellite feed goes out. It dies, you know. And the commentator's like, "Oh, it looks like we lost our satellite feed." Okay, well, uh, well, I'll continue on with that, but in a slightly different light. And he completely changed the tone of the conversation. It's like, okay, well, that's convenient. So I looked into a couple of others. That's not the first time that's happened. And I think. I think that that one and the other one I saw were both CNN. There was a reporter in D.C. that was reporting live on something and started and made a, criti um, a criticizing statement of uh, Clinton, and within 30 seconds, her feed was cut. Her oh, where'd Dean go? Where did Dean go? Was cut. What's that? I was going to be a smart ass and cut you off. Cool. I actually – I was walking around, so I actually thought that you did lose me, asshole. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if you lost me or if you were just calling me a dingo. I wasn't sure which one. I was like, dude, we're not in fucking Australia. What the hell? A dingo <laughs> ain't my baby. No, I mean it's it, – the journalism is – yeah, it's been bought and paid for. I mean they're paying for the covers that they want. And the problem is these news agencies, instead of stand, sticking by – you know, this is why I think people are getting pissed. They want to keep you – know, the news agencies keep screaming about, well, it's freedom of information. It's freedom of the press. It's freedom of speech. But only if the press is doing what – only if we're doing what we're supposed to do and we're talking about what we're supposed to talk about. Well, aren't you just exacerbating the problem? Yeah. How can the same news agency be yelling and screaming well, about censorship while at the same time censoring everything that they broadcast? Okay, let's take a look at um, uh, CNN. As they, uh, one of their guys that sat there tried to convince everybody that it's illegal for them to look at the WikiLeaks, but it's legal for them, which they can They the journalists get a little bit more leeway with looking at stuff because it's <coughs> whole freedom of press, freedom of, right? You know, freedom uh, but, of press, yeah. He sits there and he goes on, well, you'll just have to have us look at it and we'll tell you what's in it. Well, first why, of all, you're not I, you're not even you're not why, even telling us because you're not reporting on it. Not to mention what makes you more qualified to read a document than they. Yeah. I mean, are you are you a le I mean, okay, if you're a if they are legal documents and you're a legal uh correspondent. Okay, yeah, I'll say you're more qualified. What's your area of specialization? Give me your fucking resume, asshole. I hate this Carm Blanche crap. 
that just because they have a press pass, they think that they're more qualified to look at something than everybody else. You're supposed to be reporting on what's happening. You know, this whole spin crap that's been going on, I get it. It's always been there. It always will be. I'm not stupid. But they're taking it to a whole new goddamn level because they're not even allowing the opposing views to be heard or publicized. Yeah, it's yeah, I, sad. And you wonder why stations like this are becoming more and more prevalent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that Obama wants a rating put in because uh, we need to rate the station to know who's trustworthy. And wait a minute. So who gets who, to – Who determines. Yeah, who determines what's trustworthy. Who, who determines the trustworthy. Because I sure as hell don't trust it. him. I'll tell you who determines it. It's the American people. It's the public. Yeah, they if they listen, it. then it's trustworthy. Numbers go up. Numbers go down. I mean, you know what? I, not to – I don't know if he's considered a competitor of yours or not, but – I don't – Not to you know give free advertising for the Alex Jones show or for InfoWars or anything like that, but there is – Anything that comes off of that station, I take with a grain of salt. Uh, I think he makes a lot of good points. Uh, I think that they definitely poke and prod a lot, which is beneficial as an overall collective. Uh, you know, that agitation factor definitely helps everybody. Do I agree with some of his conclusions and his viewpoints and his extremism? <laughs> yeah, not all the time. Some of it, yes, I do see, but I can only hear somebody scream about you know World War III, the end of the world, so many times, and then throw an advertisement on about you know food storage that yeah. lasts for 600 years before I'm just like, okay, dude, now this is now marketing, not news. So, like I said, I mean, I gotta take everything with a grain of salt. I know that he has to make a living, but there's a reason why reporters are generally poor. <laughs> the ones that are making shitloads of money, they've been bought and paid for. I'll trust the local news station where the guy's working three fucking news jobs. And that's even getting okay. a little questionable nowadays because you have, like, okay, Bay News 9 down here. Um, It's a local, but they're affiliated with CNN, and uh, they're very questionable lately with their uh, reporting. Because they're, they're, well, I mean, okay. You know the one news station up here, the one radio station, uh, the talk radio, 101.5. Yeah. Um, even with some of their stuff, for the most part, I'd like to say that they do keep a neutral footing and they do actually try to report. I, I would say that 80 to 90 percent of the time, they really are true to that. But I've even heard it in some of, you know, like, you know, they're talking about one topic and you can tell that they've got this one type of stance, but then. You know, two days later, something else comes up, and all of a sudden, you know, they went from conservative to liberal. It's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a second here. Why, what, wait, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, I get it's two different topics. They're, I mean, I get that they're not completely related to each other, but your points of what you're stating, your point of view is, is completely conflicting with what you said 48 hours ago. That doesn't make any sense. And periodically, they do that. Which is what's made me led me to the whole eh, again grain of salt. That's why anything it doesn't matter where I get it from, whether it's talk radio, whether it's a news source you give me, something I read in the paper. Double check. It doesn't matter. I fact checked it. I look into it, and if I cannot validate it, then I'm not going to preach it. And if I do bring it up, I'll flat out say, I do not recall exactly where this came from. I do not know the validity. <laughs> I of this do statement, not recall. But, Great, we got yeah, Clinton on our hands liberal. now. I know. Hmm? I said, "Great, we got Clinton on our hands." I do not recall. Yeah, that's why I just said, "Yeah, I know." That was a liberal answer. I get it. Ha ha, asshole. <laughs> you said it, not me. Yeah, I know. Uh, Honestly, I think one of the best things was what was it? Um, and again, and actually, I think this was. Uh, okay, and going back again, like you know, to that info war station. Uh, I think this is one of their things. Yeah, you know, they went around. And they were asking young, you know, young adults, college students, 
that are supporting Clinton, what is what's a great achievement of hers? And nobody can think of one. But they're all blindly supporting her. Yeah. Now, the only flip side to that, when they do these, because I've watched a few of these things that they do, and the only flip side to it is they tend to do some of the same polling crap that pisses us off about the Democrats. They're only polling one area or one geographical or demographic or whatever, where you pretty much already know in what in what arena the answer is going to fall. You don't know what they're going to say, but you know it's going to be in line with what your uh, statement's going to be. And that's what bothers me with those things is you're essentially predetermined on you're going to get backing for your story and then use that to publicize it. I just I don't agree with that. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, there it is. All right. So what else we got? All right, we got about. Or we have to go to commercial. No, oh, we're way past that. We're late, majorly late into that. Um, we only got like ten minutes left of the show. Are you serious? No, I'm not I'm joking. Okay. Um. All right. So what didn't we? What was the second video about? Uh, the first one was about the um. Instigating the the fights, all the violence that has happened. Uh, the second one was how they've been rigging. Um, the oh, the elections. rigging elections. That's uh, right. The busing uh, the people in. Well, they don't technically I, bust people in because that no. would prove. I know. I was uh, just um, collusion. 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 So they showed them yeah, how to buy certain cars. That yeah, because you need to have the local tags. So that it doesn't, you know, so that it's not an out of state person. I mean, they, they gave their entire playbook on it. Yeah, yeah that kind of had one? me going, oh. what the hell? No wonder yeah, they got oh, fired. What is, what is it you need? What is it you need uh, to, you know, to prove that you're uh, you're a citizen? Well, all you need is, you know, some type of photo ID and some proof of uh, that you live in that area or in that state. So we set up companies, or we've had companies hire people. I mean, if I could just hire somebody. Even if it doesn't matter what I'm hiring uh, for, I just – it's nothing more than giving them a paycheck so that they can show a pay stub of a local company that I just set up for this event, and there. That's proof that they're a citizen of the state, and they get to vote. Like, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, that's the sad thing is how much energy is going into rigging this crap, and they're still getting their asses kicked? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, they would wow. be—they're they're rigging the election, so we won't know anything until they actually, the elections actually happen, and that's why they want to have these high, um, saying that Hillary wins. So if she wins because of uh, corruption, then it's well, look at that. The uh, polls were showing that. She's going to win anyway, so yeah. it was not. Well, it. you know, so that proves point, that there's no what difference. Does it make? Well, that proves that there was no uh, um, fraud because Propriety and you know, it's. I mean, Christ, yeah, and that's a, you know, that's the other fucked up thing. Is, what is it? They keep um, what a lot of this Black Lives Matter stuff, yeah, you know, originates with the Democrats, right? Yeah. And all this, you know, uh, well, we got to end police brutality. That that all, you know, a lot of that's being pushed by the Democrats. Going back to that crap that happened in Chicago, I think that shows their true colors right there. They incited a riot. They incited an event that resulted in the injury of police officers that were there just to keep the peace. And they're admitting that they caused it. So by proxy, you were attacking police officers. And you think that you're should be trusted to run the country? Are you out of your ever loving goddamn mind? I mean, I'm sorry, not even just her. I, I any one of those fucking nutcases. I mean, honestly, they should all be freaking brought in on charges. Every single goddamn one of them. It'll never happen, and we all know this. But uh, ah. Well, oh, maybe we'll uh, get somebody of a different temperament in charge of the ju- uh, the justice system, and uh, her ass will be in jail. Well, that's that there's a that was beautiful. I think that's why a lot of Democrats and Republicans are running scared and against Trump because they are worried that 
that gravy yeah, train yeah. of corruption is going to end and end very soon. The thing is, it, yeah, he, if he gets elected as president, uh, he's an extremely smart businessman, and then he'll put the best that he can get into the right positions to get things done. But we've all seen it throughout every administration in our lifetime that it takes more than the president to push a lot of these items. Yeah. And as much as I want to see her brought up on charges, as much as I want to see her answer for her criminal activities, um, it doesn't it, – it's almost – it's not going to completely – it's not going to – I'm not going to say it's not going to make a difference. I'm just saying that it's not going to make an immediate difference on whether or not he gets elected because there's so many other pieces that would also have to fall in line with that same mind thought, and we don't have those yet. Because we're still going to have the two other branches of government that are bought and paid for. So we've only gotten one third. And yeah, a lot of those guys are up for election this term, but we still got another term to go. And a lot can happen between now and then. That's why I'm not, I mean, that's why I'm saying, you know, Trump's, he, he's not the solution, he's but one he's part. a start. He, yeah, he is a start, he is one part. Okay, he's a he's a block. He's a foundation. I mean, he's a very important block. He's a foundation block. He is. He's going to get this shit started, and if nothing else, he's making people think. And honestly, people I think don't like that is going to be more de- That's going to be more detrimental than anything else. Is that he's actually making people open their goddamn eyes? We've been a blind country for way too goddamn long. Yeah, we have it. It's... <clears throat> it's... Right. I think with that, we're actually going to start wrapping it up. Um, end yeah, a couple I was going to say, what, is there anything what do you well, want to wrap up with? Because I figured we got to be close. Yeah, we're getting close, and plus the debate's getting ready to start, so I'm pretty sure some people are going to want to start getting ready for that, get their marshmallows ready to throw at the TV. Um I, that's the best suggestion I heard. You get uh, marshmallows and throw those at no. your TV. Yeah, no, I just want to see. I can't wait. Honestly, what I'm waiting for tomorrow is all the YouTube videos of the people that broke their TVs, punched their TVs, and destroyed those are their Hillary personal supporters, belongings. And I've seen those already. And yes, there has yeah, been. Yeah, that was from the last debate. Yeah. I just can't wait to see the next round. I mean, well, I, I got to point out one last thing. So Trump was on, is on a kick of... Um, term limits for Congress. And, uh, well, hang on. That, that's uh, CNN, uh, uh, Brooke, Brookie Baldwin. Well, she decides, and quote, let me just relay this to everyone that apparently from the Trump campaign, there is another major amount an announcement that Trump will make today as part of his pledge to drain the swamp. We keep hearing drain the swamp. <laughs> In Washington, he says, if I'm elected, I will push for constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress. Now, correct me, there are already term limits. So what does he mean? What do you mean there's term limits? She's saying there's already term limits for Congress. And and I love how she starts with, correct me. No, there's – okay, there's term limits in the form of they have to be reelected every so often, but they can be reelected for a lifetime. Yep. Uh, so there's really actually is no term limit. As long as they keep getting reelected, they get to keep their jobs. So they can, can they can do it for a couple of years. They can do it for decades upon decades, which we've seen with several people who – uh, needed to be out a long ass time. 30, ago. 40, 50 years. Yeah. That's not term limit. I mean, again, no, okay, uh, we need to add that to the list of things of the dictionary for liberals. We, we got to add that one. Yeah, that's, that's, that's another one. So, and with that, that's where we're going to end it. I just, I, I wanted to end, uh, end on a pretty funny note of correct me if I'm wrong, but there already are term limits. Um, What's funny is the lady that responded goes, well, 
Um, there is term limits for the president, but Congress, no. No, there's not. No. <laughs> there's not. I mean, that's, that's, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And this is somebody we elected, I'll bet. No, wow. this is a CNN journalist. Okay, if I actually called myself a journalist, I'd have to, like, go kick her ass or something because that's, like, I, I mean, it's just my thought that you couldn't get more tarnished. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what to say other than wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's – holy shit. All right, with that – um that's going to be the show. Uh, we'll be back next week with the Southside Mutts, as we are every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon uh, with my commentary on the debate uh, for the Reaver of Common Sense show um, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on SHR Media. Have a good night, everybody. You got anything good else to America. add? Just good night, America. You've been listening to The Reaver of Common Sense with its host, Jersey Joe. You can tune in every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on hbpundit.com and shrmedia.com.